Right, welcome to this faction tactics video. It's for the Tau Empire. Uh, I'm gonna run a series where I'm taking my favorite units, favorite combinations for my Tau list, and I go for a deeper dive into tactics here. So it helps explain the unit options I've gone for, but also a chance to uh, see these units, to theorize, to show you the loadouts, the reasoning why I've gone for certain combinations. Then we'll actually roll up some dice as well, just to really try and help illustrate uh, how these can be used on the battlefield. So if you're looking for some tactics for the tower, uh, then check out this series. Uh, and it should, should all link back to a complete army video as well, 2,000 points. Uh, that video should be alive as well. It just runs through the entire list, and these videos branch off from that, uh, going into some deeper uh, tactics. Tau seem to be, at the moment, on the upsurge, seem to be doing quite well. Uh, their, their codex is tasty enough, uh, and firepower from them is, is back, I think, to being deadly. So looking good for the Tau, and I've picked out some of my favourite combinations. So in this particular video, we're going to take a look at uh, XV-88s, or broadsides as they're known, the heavier uh, firepower support battle suits that are available for the Tau. Uh, I'm not going to go through every combination. I'm going to pick out sort of my combination that I go for and, and show you the, uh, the loadout for that. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at, at these models here. There really are them. Not everyone goes for them. I, I think they're a solid unit choice for the Tau. Uh, if you want a bit of backline firepower support, this is certainly a unit you want to consider. Uh, there's upsides and downsides to them. We'll talk about the whole unit as an option, but there they are. Well, you've got to take a look at the size of the guns. So if you wanted to get into Tau or expand your Tau collection, do check out the link below for the outpost. Uh, that's discount 40k, available in the UK and across the European Union. And if your order's big enough, you can tap into free postage with them as well. They're really quick. I get my stuff from them. When you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything, but it helps support the channel. There they are. And I'll show you the third one. So you can pose them up quite differently. So that's those. They're, they're a great presence on the border or sort of anchor point for your army. Uh, so they're not the quickest around the board. So you really think carefully at where you want to put them. Ideally in a position where they're going to get a good field of fire or they can emerge from somewhere to then lay down a good firepower. You've got to think about the entire game. The ideal situation is that these survive the battle and are able to put down firepower for you every turn. Uh, so you've got to think about where you're going to set up, where's the enemy most likely going to be, what's the most open area that I can cover with these and they can just sit there and just provide that firepower support. If they're able to survive and fire every turn, I think they're a really good asset to have uh, I'm looking for these to crack open the toughest of armor, roll up some dice later on uh, with them. So, current points for these uh, is, I think they're 110 points each. So my squad of three is 330 points. This, this is a unit you don't want to waste. You want them firing every turn to get the best value out of them. So, Broadsides. So they're movement five. As I said, they are slow. Uh, to counter that, you can go for your detachment, the Montcar detachment, which uh, on turns one, two, and three it will allow these to move and advance, uh, and your weapons will count as assaults. So there's a lot more uh, movement available with those if you go for that detachment. If not, I'm currently running Kuyan, which means five inch move. If I advance, not be able to shoot my weapons like that, like heavy weapons and so on. Uh, therefore, uh, I'll try and tuck them away in cover if I can, uh, but tight to the edge of that cover and then just emerge out five inches and then to get that uh, early shots in the game. If not, then I'll try and position them within cover, protected as much as I can, but uh, it's open and, and ready to shoot uh, with those. The upside to them is they are tough. Toughness six, base of a two upside, which is fantastic. Eight wounds, a lot of wounds the opponent to try and get through. 24 wounds here. Uh, to, to wipe these out, really good. Uh, the OCF2 as well, so they quite happily sit on an objective. Um, but I found that can be restrictive. You say, right, these are for the objective, and that objective may be tucked away somewhere that's not the best place for a field of fire. So, priority number one with these, I always try and set them up to get the best field of fire. Their job is to shoot stuff at long range, and so that's the priority over and above an objective. So, if I have the choice between the two, garden objective. Or get a really good field of fire i would choose field of fire for these that's their job and i'll use other units uh, to help protect the objectives 
So that's their job. Uh, they're a backline unit. Unless you're going to go aggressive on the move of them with like modern card detachment. Usually these will sit in a good fire position uh, for me throughout the game. But other units I'm going to use to deep strike in and push forwards. This unit is a hold the line unit and firepower support is a priority. So you, the two routes you can go down for your loadout with these is you can go for uh, the tank penetrating heavy rail rifles, which is my combo, adds, but you can also go down the lots of missile shots, the high yield missile pods, which are twin linked, you get six shots each, so six shots per model, uh, fours for hits, but you want to improve that, and then uh, strength for seven, minus one, two damage. So I've not gone for that option because I need anti-tank. If you really need anti-medium light infantry, uh, then sure, go for the high yield missile pods, but I really need anti-tank, and so therefore I'd definitely go for the, high, uh, the heavy rail rifles. I also found that strength seven is quite poor as uh, if you're trying to, you know, it's not strong enough to get twos to wound toughness four. AP minus one is not very good at all. Uh, cover's just gonna negate that straight away. Up against space rings, they put armor of contempt on it, so there's not too much to that. Damage two is quite tame as well. So that's tame weaponry. Only, only range 30 as well. I think they knocked the range down. That used to be 36. So, Definitely, my choice is the heavy rail rifle. This will get you at range 60, so you'll have the board covered with their firepower. You get two shots each, so I've got six shots coming from this squad. Their strength 12, which is excellent strength. You're gonna be threes to wound uh, the majority of vehicles out there. Uh, even the toughest of vehicles, at least fours. Uh, and then if you're up against the heaviest of infantry, which sometimes you need to gun down some real like, aggressors or something, uh, you're at strength 12, so you're gonna be twos to wound virtually all types of infantry. A minus four, which is superbly good, and then D6 plus one damage, which is like a LAS cannon. So uh, that D6 plus one is really good as well. Between two and seven wounds each. Uh, so max, you could get 14 wounds for one of these weapons, and you've got three in the squad. That's why I really just try and invest in this decent base of firepower. Uh, on top of that, you can add extra things. Um, so their rule is four plus against mortal wounds for no pain. There's nothing extra really going on there. Uh, so any number of models can have the heavy rail rifle replace the whole missile pods we talked about already. Any number of models can be equipped up to two of the following but cannot take duplicates. So the combination you've got seeker missiles, one seeker missile, twin plasma rifle, twin smart missile system, and one uh, weapon support system. So the weapon support system could be quite useful, ignoring modifiers to hit rolls just to really try and keep that firepower accurate. Uh, you've got two slots to use up here. Uh, I take the twin smart missile system um, for an extra bit of DACA. Indirect fire twin link range 30. It's I'm not using it too often because I don't want to split fire usually because I'm being guided in. I don't want to split fire and lose my ballistic skill bonus. Uh, and then it's not really cut out for taking down armoured targets. So it's there as a bonus to chip off a few extra wounds, um, but I'm not using it too often. I mean, the weapon support system might be a, a tastier option to go for, but I like the idea of more guns uh, with these. I was running the twin plasma rifle, that's what they're modeled with, but that's been cut down quite seriously. Um, twin plasma rifle, just one shot, range 18. 18 range is the problem, uh, but it's strength eight minus three and three damage. So for a bit of extra anti-tank, so there's a real target that's got very close to your lines, uh, then that extra bit of firepower could be useful enough. Maybe for shooting down heavy infantry as well, uh, as an option. I, I definitely take the Seeker Missile. So I'd, I really rate these. I think these are a very, very, very useful asset for the tower. Wherever I can get them, I'll, I'll, I'll run them in my tower force. So Seeker Missile, it's a one shot only. There's often times in the game, the opening salvo or a key point in the game where you need to unleash it, as high impact salvo as possible, that's when you unleash these. They're one shot weapons, I've got three in the squad. Uh, Nine fours, obviously that can be modified. Strength 14, insane strength, really, really good. Uh, eight minus three, again, which is really good, and D6 plus one damage. So for that opening salvo, just to get those extra shots coming through, I think is a, a must take, it's highly recommended. So I take the Seeker Missile for sure. So any number of models can be equipped up to two of the following. This is your drones, you can take duplicates 
So if you want to, really want to protect these, you can take double shield drones on these that increase them to extra wound each. So they'll be like 10 wounds each, like 30 wounds for the opponent to try and get through. Um, you can take as a marker drone as well, which is useful just to uh, recap on that one. Marker drone. The bearer's unit has the marker like keyword and can act as an observer unit for another unit, even if, even if it advanced this turn. Uh, but to gain the marker like keyword, as uh, if you guide in for someone, uh, if you've got marker light, then uh, you're going to strip cover, which is so so useful just to really keep your AP minus good. So the combination that I'm running at the moment is the squad leader taking uh, the marker drone on him. And the others, as I talked about, want firepower. I take missile drones with these. So your missile drone is going to give you uh, two shots at range 30, strength five minus, range 30, two attacks, five to hit, can be modified, uh, strength seven minus one, two damage, just for the extra bit of firepower uh, with those. If you really are thinking you get shot at a lot, my philosophy is I've got a lot of other stuff the opponent's going to go after. These seem to be semi lower priority and therefore I'll exchange a little bit of extra protection just take extra DACA uh, with the drones so there'll be five missile drones with these that's like 10 extra shots I think it's useful enough range 30 as well pretty good range and then just take one marker drone on the squad as well so that's the combination I go for uh, with these and then next to useless in close combat. So I'm looking, at, looking for these to take down the toughest that the opponent has to offer. So I might quite mind, I'm sure you won't mind. I borrowed his, um, this, <laughs> it's a land raider. This is kind of the prime target these uh, would go after in games. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll up some dice uh, to see how effective uh, these are. So one thing I would say is that when these shoot in your ideal situation, you must guide them in. Add, so add one unit acts as the observer unit to see the target the other one's the guided unit the guided unit then gets plus one to their ballistic skill uh, so note that's ballistic skill not plus one to the hit rolls so plus one to their ballistic skills so they go from a four up to a three up to hit uh, which is you know makes a huge difference uh, and then also if you're guided in, again as I mentioned earlier, if it's a marker like the keyword unit, say a squad of fire warriors, a strike team, and they've got the marker like keyword, uh, then they'll ignore cover. Now that can be really helpful if you're getting against land raider, tucked in cover, gonna try and push up their save as much as they can. If you're scrubbing cover and you're hitting at AP minus four, you're knocking the land raider down to sixes to save, and so it's, it's really in trouble if those wounds uh, come through. So uh, with these, if you really wanna bust the vehicles, uh, the issue is trying to hit the target. We've talked about guiding them in to get threes. If you sit these still, they do have the heavy keyword for the heavy air rifle. So potentially if you sat still and guided these in, they'll be hitting on twos, which is exceptionally good. Um, then the next is trying to wound the target. We've said that strength 12 is really, really good. Uh, the Land Raider Redeemer, though, I believe is Toughness 12. This is a tough target, but even at Toughness 12, I'm still forced to get my wounds coming through. And what makes the Heavy Air Rifle even better is you've got Devastating Wounds. If you get those sixes to wound, they'll bypass any uh, invun saves and so on. You just go straight through on damage, which against the tougher targets, you know, maybe you're up against a vehicle that's boasting some kind of invun, like a four up invun save, it's really going to hurt these, their effectiveness. Uh, then if you're able to get through on Devastating Wounds, uh, that's very useful indeed i think that's pretty much the other things that i use yeah there's a few things this is a tactics video so again trying to get, make these as effective as possible uh, stealth battle suits are a great combination to work in partnership with these stealth battle suits forward observers each time this unit is an observer unit so they're observing to help them and until the end of the phase, each time a range attack is made by a model in the guided unit that targets their spotted unit, you can reroll hit rolls of one. So you could be on twos to hit rerolling ones, which is the most accurate you could get. And, and then you can reroll your wound rolls of one as well, which is hugely helpful uh, if you're you know, struggling to wound 
as, or it's a tougher target. So that comes highly recommended uh, with the stealth battle suits. What will help these out is your detachment choice as well. So with Montka, for example, um, turns one to three, you get lethal hits. So six is to hit. Uh, just go straight through and wound. Superb, really gonna help them out. Uh, if you can get a HQ choice to take the enhanced and coordinated exploitation, you can uh, guide them in and give them sustained hits, which is excellent. Six is to hit. In this detachment, we'll go straight through the armor and also generate a bonus hit with sustained hits. That's coordinated exploitation. Or the detachment I've gone for, I was on Monk, I've gone back to Koyan. And you can take a uh, enhancement here for Unity Devastation. Put that on HQ choice. And you can get lethal hits with them. Uh, you, you guide them in with that unit and they, uh, the observer unit and then the guided unit. These guys, they'll get lethal hits as well. And then my detachment rule, turn three onwards, uh, is sustained hits of one. If you start getting sixes to hit and you're popping extra hits on top of what you're already getting, it's scary. And if you if they're guided and it's sustained hits of two, a couple of sixes, all of a sudden, the target's been plastered with hits from very high caliber weaponry. So you start to stack up all those little extras and you've got yourself a very highly accurate, very, very deadly uh, unit on the board. And as, as I said, if they're able to fire every turn, uh, they're going to cause big trouble uh, for the opponent. In which case, uh, we can take a look at these in action. So as I said, we've got the board covered uh, with their firepower. So we'll maybe we'll go for a, a few scenarios. So say bog standard units, so no kind of help from anybody. So six shots in total, two shots each. We'll unleash the missiles, or no, hold off. We'll just say we've got a standard unit, I haven't taken the missiles. So we are looking at that situation three hits from that squad so it's average and now looking at fours to wound and I've got two wounds coming through and the opponent's gonna get a six up save hit block so two have gone through uh, and we're looking at 2d6 uh, plus one on each of those so that's eight damage causing that land raider so some damage has come through uh, that's actually a pretty good roll for that setup now if you throw in the, the missiles as well, there's two hits. This is the Seeker Missile, and you go up against a target that you really want to take down. I'll try and wind on threes. Uh, one comes through, and that's actually been saved. So that's that situation. Some damage caused, it's okay. We start adding in our combinations now. So say we're going to guide them in. We're going to increase our ballistic skill. We'll go to three pluses. And my usual situation is that these, half the time, perhaps more, they're moving to try and get into position. So therefore, let's say they've moved. Uh, but let's say I've used my um, stealth team to guide them in. So I'd now be needing threes to hit and I'm re rolling my ones. So no ones, uh, but threes to hit is pretty good. I've got four hits. I'm going to try and wound here on fours. Uh, there's no ones here to re roll, but three have made it through. Six is to block none. 3d6 plus 3, it's a terrible roll. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage. And then we'll go for the rockets. They've all hit. See that bonus? Having those, they're modelled on here. The Seeker missiles just look very cool. 3s to wound. Just the one makes it through. Not blocked. And another 6 plus 1, done another 7 damage in that land raid, isn't it? In huge trouble, perhaps, I think, with a wound left. So, making all the difference. Now, bear in mind, I haven't used this, the missiles here. There's another 10 shots available uh, with the missiles also. Uh, let's say we are now looking at uh, turn three with Koyan. I probably won't roll any sixes, but we'll see. And they've been guided in. They're nearly always guided in. <laughs> right, this is this is illustrating it for you. So I've got five hits, but guided in with Koyan. I'll add in another four, which is insane. Now you've got a fistful of dice. Uh, fours to wound. Rerolling ones, look at that. I'm 
think I've illustrated the need for <laughs> a stealth team. Which has turned that around. It's game changing this is. Uh, take away all these. Remember we're up against a real tough target. Four have got through. Uh, none have been blocked. Just the AP minus four is so good. Uh, and now we're looking at dead. There you go. Target destroyed. And that's, that's all the difference. Uh, there. Loads and loads of wounds. Uh, plus the missiles on top of that. But the target's already uh, been eliminated. So just... Just showing you, you can take a unit, pay all those points, and they're literally half as good than when you take all your extra enhancements and helper units and so on. Uh, so think carefully about your choice of detachment. Uh, Koyan, just to get the most out of the firepower. I'm expecting these to do well on the, the first few turns of the game without Koyan, but it just they can just become excellent uh, the longer the game goes on. I usually uh, try and hide them if I can, and then bring them out, because sometimes you know a wise opponent's going to try and take them down if they know uh, if they've been up against them before. So I try and hide them as much as I can. If not, then I'll, I'll set them up in cover, cover and try and uh, limit the amount of angle that the opponent has to these. Uh, but the priority for these is good field of fire and to cover the board uh, with their long range heavy rifle shots and time and time again in games uh, I've been able to use them against the toughest of targets even things like land raiders uh, they can be effective enough on the table so do let us know the combination that you use these for perhaps you use the same philosophy the same loadout the same tactics as me uh, maybe use them in different ways let us know in the comment section below uh, you can share your own battlefield experience be helpful for the town players perhaps people getting into collecting the town and so on just to see the tactics uh, for this unit. But these come harshly recommended. Uh, and I take the squad of three. It is expensive, but it means that when you observe with them, play stratagems on them, uh, you're uh, a unit that can grant reroll ones, reroll ones to wound, it's more value to it because the unit's bigger. There's more and more dice in the pool for you to use. Right? And so it's worth just making that investment to have a good solid unit on the board for some very effective long range firepower support keep looking out for more videos in this series if you enjoy this series do hit the thumbs up as uh, and uh, leave a comment really does help the video check out the complete army video uh, for the tower you'll see the whole force laid out uh, and all the units and options that i've gone for uh, and then for discount 40k use that link below for the outpost uh, it really does help support the channel thanks for watching see you next time